they, they say this is the message. This is, look, I'm telling you, when you work these steps, you get the whole point of, look, the steps, again, I always say this are based on all the philosophies and religions. We even have prayer and meditation, Eastern, Western philosophies, whatever you want to call it, ancient philosophies. They're all in this first part of this big book. And what are the reason for that is these philosophers and thinkers and religions, they call it opiate of the masses. You ever hear that term? It's like, a, it's like having that con higher power of consciousness. But we were created, the source is in here. When we were created by in God's image, we were meant to be happy. I can always say like a puppy dog, a little child, right? They're, they're to find the joy and happiness. It's there. It's there all the time. We block it out. We wake up and we're in self-centered fear, it's called. Get out of self, you know, the third step prayer. The third step prayer. Look, how many times we read this third step prayer, but we intellectualize it? I don't have to, you know, I'll say the prayer here and I'll ask somebody, what does it mean? Well, it says, uh, you know, we got to get out of the self, right? Third step alone says, made a decision to turn our will and our lives over the care of a higher. So people, they intellectualize it. But in getting it here and really feeling the emotion of it. If it says, step three says, made a decision to turn our will and our lives over the care of God as we understood him. As, it, did you do that? You know, we read step three, but then we leave the meeting or maybe during the meeting, we're, we're thinking about problems. They're, they're not. They're not real. When we understand, when that's a spiritual awakening. When I was working the steps and I started to do it through only through this big book, then I had the comprehension. I was in my spiritual awakening. Was I was in my car, I had resentment towards someone. It might have been for years, right? I was thinking about it, and I started to realize the falseness and the the the, the really craziness of this thinking. That that's not what life's all about. Hey, look, you can look at a practical level. We came from dust, we're going to dust. All these emotions and feelings, you know, again, even, you know, all around us, and I always related to the food and they're, they're telling us the, the uh, you know, how great these foods are the center and making them a higher power. And even for the children, they show all of this craziness on the advertisements on the internet, TV, or whenever you drive down the highway. The craziness of it all. But it's not only with the food, it's the craziness of our society. It all became about material things and success, and that's where the joy and happiness would come from. We all realize that, you know, it's just amazing. The more success you have, the more sorry. It even says that in a big, big book where, you know, the rich person cannot enter the kingdom of heaven, right? How can you be happy if you base your life on material things? Because you know what happens? We say we all of a sudden get something material and that we really want it all the time. And, you know, and I'm going to go to a story about the man climbing Mount Everest. When we attain those things, we're more depressed. Why? Because it didn't achieve what it was supposed to. Same with the diets. When we go on the diets, we get on a goal weight, we say, okay, it's all right. I'm down to this weight. But you know what? You're drawn back into the addiction because the perception never came towards the food, you know, the clarity. And I could bring up the water, the, the apple, the orange, God's gift to us, right? When we look at those and we're in the present, it all comes, joy and happiness comes to us, right? What we have to do, you know, the only thing is, and I told you, a meeting used to go to the, uh, they'd go around the room, everybody was what they call in the problem, not the solution. So they were all talking about all their problems, making them worse. And, you know, you go back a year or two later, same problem. But there was a nun there. And she says, well, look, just sit. It was just an amazing thing, revelation. What we have to do is be centered and be quiet. And then, then that's the answer. I also told a story about this guy, he, he, one of the meetings I went to, he said that there was this rehab place. It was based on a religious order. And he really wanted to get in, and he, he tried, and he, he was very, you know, there's just so many people want to get into this. He finally got into the thing, and he figured, hey, this is the place where they're going to heal me. I'm going to get over my addiction. I'm going to feel great. You know, he was very depressed and everything. And when he got up there and he was interviewed, the cleric there said to him, he says, you see that room? Just go in there and sit. An hour later, he comes out. And he says, did you sit? Keep on sitting, right? This is it, getting centered, being in the present, right? Being in the present. You know, the sound like they have in these philosophies where they hit a gong, that brings you to the present. That's all we have. Well, you know, we're always planning the past, regretting the future. That's the insanity of it all. So again, right here, right now, doing these steps and understanding step one alone. I always say, you know, but I could, sometimes you'll hear a person been in these programs for years, and did you figure out, did you ever really do step one? If you I mean, if you're into the problem, did you do step one? You know, even the music in our society, right? You know, the love songs bring us back to sentimentalities. Let, let me read to you. 
And then we're going to hear some shares. I do want to hear some shares today. Uh, I love that when people come in and just really, really powerful. I don't know if you've been to the last few meetings. I mean, it's just, it really helps me here and everybody what they say and reinforces everything that we're discussing here. But anyway, this is when we're into the self. And we have a way of getting out of self through these 12 steps, spiritual program, right? Based on all of these philosophies and religions, let me tell you. So on page 52, and a lot of people like to follow along, in the second paragraph it says, we were having trouble with personal relationships. We couldn't control our emotional natures. We were prey to misery and depression. We couldn't make a living. We had a feeling of uselessness. We were full of fear. We were unhappy. We couldn't seem to be the real help to other people. So the thing is, is that this book always tells you the problem, but right away it tells you the solution. So right here, again, we can read this. You can read this a hundred times. You could go to a thousand meetings. You could have a thousand sponsees. You can, you can do all kinds of service, whatever you want to do. You could stand on your head. You could go meditate 10 hours, 20 hours a day. But we have something here. Meditation is good as far as it goes. And it's a great thing, you know, where we have prayer and meditation, a little bit of faith. That's all we need, the belief. You know, just a belief that there's a spirituality and that we're built in the image of a higher power, which is really true. But, you know, the other thing, too, is whether you want to believe it or not, it really works. When I get out of self and have that faith in, in something else, it's just totally amazing. But anyway, so we saw others solve their problems by a simple, the word simple. This is a simple program. We, our intellect wants to complicate it, reliance about this, upon the spirit of the universe, we had to stop doubting the power of God. Our ideas did not work, but the God idea did. The God idea did. That's the whole key here. You know, you're trying to figure out, you know, you had your higher power was your success, your money, everything like that, getting people to like you. I mean, I don't have to get people to like me, but I could be a likable person, meaning that this is where the suffering comes in. We desire. The desire is the cause of all suffering. That's a thing I heard in Eastern philosophy, desire is the cause of all suffering. When we desire, you know, and when we try to be happy, we can't try to be happy. It just comes into us. Again, say there's something today you want to do or you're fearful of what's going on. And, you know, some people say, well, I got to go out there and do it and, and let me push myself out the door. What I would suggest is just get sit on the couch and just sit and get centered. You know, and we don't have to do anything because people say, well, how, how can anything happen? If you get really centered and get the joy, you know, they call the chakras and to meditate and get centered and feel your breath, all of a sudden the world will open up. The fear will go away. The self-centeredness, you get that, that power called kundalini, whatever you want to call it. I have all these philosophies, but it's all related to the same thing, whether it's the steps of the Eastern, Western philosophies, you know, faith in a higher power, God, you know, faith the size of mustard seed, whatever you want to do, so long as it's not me. 